All right, so in your training manual, chapter five, exercise one, what we're gonna be doing is observing the PLC input and output indicators as we go through a process that they request us to mm, complete here. So as we go through this, what we'll be doing is looking at the indicator lights um, there on the, the PLC. The inputs are across the top. The output lights are on the bottom. Uh, I have a close-up view as we, hopefully we'll be able to see all that as we go through. Um, as we've mentioned before, um, the inputs are 0 through 6. And uh, on the PLC, what you'll see that they are numbered in that same order, uh, 0 through, well, actually, I think it's up to, um, I can't remember, 7 or 8. That goes up to 0 to 9. So there's t a total of 10 inputs of potential, uh, but we're only using the first 7. On the output side, there are, uh, let's see, uh, 0 through 5, so 6 potential outputs, but we'll only be using 4 outputs. And what we'll see is if one of these uh, outputs is actuated, one of the indicator lights, as you can see, none of the indicator lights are shown on here, will come on. Uh, what you'll see is that we have three indicator lights here. That shows me that the stop button is being pushed. It shows me the auto uh, mechanical is, uh, is being actuated. And I see that uh, I3, that's I3 in the fourth light there, uh, shows me that the backward feeder um, cylinder has been retracted. So let me make sure this thing is armed. Now there is a couple steps that they ask us to do here. Let me transition to that screen and you'll be able to see the, the um, close up of the uh, PLC there. So um, it says that what we want to do here, and I got to get everything so I can read it as well. <clears throat> it says ensure that it's powered up, but what we want to do is to actually turn the air pressure off. So they actually tell us to go one step further and to um, disconnect the air pressure. I'm not going to take the hose off. I'm just going to go through and put a lockout on it so that uh, air pressure is not going to come on here. All right. At this point, uh, have your uh, instructor make sure the software is loaded and make sure that you've got everything triggered as it says. It says that we want this to be in the manual mode. And so let me see if I've got this all set up here correctly here. I'm sorry, my mouse gets all freaky here. It disappears on me. There it goes. So, um, yeah, so I, I have the same kind of uh, setup as I, make sure I got these two right. Yeah, that looks like the right one. So um, what you'll see is that I've got the air well, it's turned off. I still have air pressure here, but you know what I can do? I'm going to go over to the master manifold here and cut the pressure. There we go. No pressure in the system now. Uh, this valve is set so that when the um, that it will exhaust out there, I, I believe. But uh, or maybe I think it exhausted off the primary manifold, so the pressure is not held in there. So uh, the next thing uh, what I was going to go through and show this view here. Hmm, don't remember why, but uh, there's the PLC. I can see number one and three, as you see on the top right hand corner. I've got the back view there so that you can see the um, the sensor on the verification. You can see in my other hand there. Oh, I had a pencil here, so you should be able to see that light come on. As you can see from my angle, it's hard to see, but you can see it in the bottom right hand corner. And then you should also be able to see these lights uh, potentially come on there. I'm going to try to um, pan this. Let me just get it into a deep dive there. Zoom in a little bit. So I should be able to watch this as we go on. So let's go back to the, um, yeah, come on, switch hands. All right. So what do we need to do here is it says that we need to make sure uh, that all the cylinders have been retracted and we are in manual mode. That's what I was going to go do. Um, I'm going to go through and turn it to manual mode. And so when you see manual mode, you'll see I put the, I, I, in pencil I wrote there number two. So in manual mode, number two turns on. And what you, they want you to do is to go through, scroll down a little bit in the PDF file. So if you have something like Foxit or something, you, you would go through and write in the numbers. It says it's 0101. Zero, one. Well, that doesn't look like what I've got here, right? Uh, um, switch here. Boo, 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 boo. All right. 
So what you'll see is I do have it in manual mode. And well, number two is on. So it's actually one, two, and three. All right. So that's kind of uh, a misnomer there, right? So it's actually not going to be zero, one, zero with the manual number two would be on as well. But in automatic mode, that's zero. So what we're going to do is to go down this and it says to go through and push the buttons. And so now this is a little backwards because it's got zero on the far right. And in our PLC, you'll see zero is on the left hand side. So you're going to have to put these in backwards, right? So on the left, you have zero, one, two, three. But what we need to do is push the stop button. OK, so um, boop, 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 boop. let's transition back here. Uh, get my mouse in the right place. So I'm going to push the stop button and what we see is light number one goes off. So I, I'm going to tell you what your lights are here. So starting from the right to the left, it's going to be zero, zero and zero two there is on. So you'd put a one under zero two and you put a one under zero three. The rest of those four, five and six would have values of zero, meaning that they are off. OK, so I'm going to let up, up on that button. It next asks me to go through and press the start button. Now, if I'm going too fast, obviously it's a video, so you can just stop it whenever you want to. So as you can see here, let me back off here. I'm about to push the stop, the start button. Get my camera here positioned a little better. And when I push on that, what you'll see there is that first light coming on. So with me holding it down, you're going to record all the lights that are shown there. Now, one thing I didn't mention here, and it didn't ask us to, to put this down, is the output lights. But you can see output zero is on. All right. Now, what happened when I pushed the start button? It caused the system to start. And that light probably come on it, and I wasn't paying attention. So what is output this triggering? Well, we've got the air pressure turned off, but it's actually turning on that actuator, A+. Plus that which would go through and supply air and actually move this forward. But again, we've got the air turned off so that we can just go through and identify what these lights do. All right. So the next thing it asked me to go through and um, I'm going to try to not move the camera too much. So uh, we're down to number three here. And three says that they want me to go through and put it in the automatic position and we'll leave it there. And then we'll do the next to items. All right. So let's transition back to the other screen. And I am going to go through and switch it to the automatic mode. Right. And we see which lights go off. And so you're going to record what you see right there. If you want to stop, you can do that. All right. The next thing it asks me to do after I've gone through and done the automatic position. It says with the automatic, with the switch in automatic, which it is, press the start button and record the inputs. So I'm going to hold that right there if you want to stop the video. That's number four. You'll put the light numbers in there again in the backwards location. Zero is on the far left. All right. Okay. So let's go through and turn to the next page. Uh, the next page is going to ask us to do something a little different. Let's see what it says. It says place the switcher back to manual and then grab the feeder cylinder and manually pull that out. OK, so we're going to have to do a couple things here in order for me to do that. Let me go through and transition back to the screen. So first of all, what I'm going to do is to take the cassette off, remove the blocks. And what they want me to do here is to move this cylinder forward. I'm going to manually manipulate it. All right. And so let's zoom out here a little. Let's see if I change the screen a little bit here. And when I move this out, what you'll do is keep an eye on the lights, right? Wait till I get to the final. As I move it forward, you'll see a light went off. We're not quite finished there. I'm going to push it all the way forward. And when I get all the way forward, you'll see another indicator light came on. 
all right? And what's also kind of interesting here, um, if we were to look at the PLC program, when it got all, when it proceeded all the way forward and this indicator came on, what it actually did was turn that actuator off. So it's no longer pushing air pressure forward to cause it to go forward, okay? So again, let's go through and stop. If you need to stop the video, this is the point where they want you to go through for number five and list out all the inputs there. As you can see, there's only two input lights, so list those ones in the proper location. All right. And then they want me to go through and manually retract it. So I'm going to bring it back now. And switch back over here. You saw one light go off. And what you should see is another light come on as far as the sensors, as well as you'll see a different set of lights are now on. Hopefully my audio didn't drop there. Yeah, a different set of lights are now on. So we're now going to manually manipulate the uh, actuator, the verification. So this is number seven. It says retract the verification so and then manually push this all the way down. Stop the video if you wish. Those are the lights that you need to identify. Now you'll also identify here that number one on the output, even though it's not asking us for outputs, number one was actually triggered. So when it comes down, what does the B? The B says to go through and uh, push the B cylinder forward. All right. So um, I'm actually going to go through and retract this first. Well, let me follow the directions. Okay, so that was number seven. If you want to stop and fill in seven there. Eight, they want me to go through and with the transfer cylinder, so retract. Oh, now, I'm sorry, this is, excuse me. <clears throat> so that was number seven. Extend, uh, ret oh, sorry, I'm so, let me back up here. That was number six. Let's stop for just a moment. I manually retracted the cylinder and extended the verification so to downward. That's number six. Number seven, I need to now push this up and then extend the transfer cylinder. Now on the transfer cylinder, it does not have an indicator to let us know that it's all the way back. But if I go through and extend that out, once it gets to its full extension, you'll see that indicator came on. There's a short time D came on and then it switched right to A. I'll talk about that in just a moment. But if you need to go through and stop the video, you'll need to go through and put your indicator lights now for number seven. All right, so what you'll see is that uh, A plus has been actuated here. Uh, what typically would have happened is that D came on for just a second, and D was the ejection cylinder, and that's on the output. And then what happened was that this should have gone back, or automatically goes back. When this is deactivated, uh, C, uh, sorry, B here, uh, because it's a one-way valve, the default has air pressure on this side to keep it back. So there doesn't have to be an actuation to get it back because it's just a two-way valve with a spring return, okay? So um, I guess I, with the uh, transfer cylinder extended, I was supposed to have that extended. So let me go through and do that. So we are on number eight with that extended. All right, fully extended. They want me next to go through and extend the body supply cylinder. So that's kind of a collision situation, right? You see how slow it's going up there. So both of those are forward, right? That's number eight, but it also wants me to go through and push the start button. So I'm going to press the start button, and then that's where you would go through and put in for number eight. There's four lights on there. I've got the start button now. There's what I'm trying to show you. All right. So if you got that recorded and stopped, now I'm going to go through and release the button. All right. And it now asks me to go through and with 
uh, the cylinder is still extended, release the start button and place the selector back into manual mode. That's manual. You'll see that I have those lights. Oh, sorry. Let's say manually extract all cylinders. Forgot to do one more cylinder. We need this guy down as well. So we got all four cylinders down. All right. And I, as you can see here, which what's kind of interesting here. Oh, I'm sorry. Manually number ten. I'm sorry, folks. With all, sorry, with the cylinders. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry that. I, w I did 9 correct, but I didn't do 10 correct. We're going to do 10 in just a second. But um, um, with all of the cylinders retracted, put it in manual. So I told you incorrectly there um, for number 10, they should all be back. And then in manual mode, you'll put the lights. It shows three lights. That's number 10. Okay, so that mm, it's hard for me to do handle all this stuff at one time, but uh, read what I'm supposed to do. But uh, the one thing that I want to say is that you now have uh, numeric values here, uh, ones and zeros. Um, this is part of a of a of a byte or a hexadecimal value. Uh, what they're going to ask you to do in the next section is take the values in ones and zeros that we entered there. And the whole reason that they put it in reverse order here, they put the zero on the far right hand side, is because now you're going to go through and do a calculation. So that shows how you would do the calculation using uh, decimals. But we're using a binary system. And so using the values that are shown uh, your ons and off lights. So if zero zero was open, that zero or I zero is actually the ones position. The I one position, and let me transition here. I hopefully I've got the right slide here. Yeah. So the I zero position. That's the that's the zero position. This is the two position, I'm sorry, one position, the two position, the four position, and the eight position uh, in order to go through and calculate up uh, the binary value, all right, based on which elements are on. So if I go back over here, what you'll see a little further down, just as a, I mean, you did this in the PLC class. You'll do it here too, but the idea is if we had bit 0, 1, 2 is off, 3 is off, 4 is on, and 5 is on, you are now going to create the decimal equivalent of that binary. Binary number is 1100111. One, zero, zero, one, one. What is the decimal equivalent of the binary value 1100111? One, one, zero, zero, one, one? Well, it's showing here is 51. The thing about decimal value 51, if I told you, oh, the PL shows so many decimal value of 51, you'd be hard pressed to know which of the indicator lights were on. You'd have to go through and reverse out the decimal value into the binary value so that you could figure out which of those lights were on. But what we're doing here in this uh, exercise two here is doing just that calculating up the decimal values for each of the binary values that you had from the previous section, 1 through 10. All right. So I will say that this is a very similar exercise that we'll be doing on the 202 as well as the 203. Obviously, there's, there's different cylinders for me to manually manipulate, buttons to push, and so on. All right. And sensors. So that's the chapter. I'm trying to get to the right page here. That concludes this video and the chapter five exercise one uh, exercise.